sixth canto. This is Yamaraj's instructions as messengers. This is in relationship to um, Ajamyo, who, uh, when he was leaving his body, after seeing the Yamadudas coming to get him, he called out to his son, whose name was Narayan. And by that call, he called in, without any preconceived notions. In other words, he called almost purely. Because he was calling his son, it wasn't pure chanting. But he chanted, he called, what we say, without any desire for anything. He called, he chanted, what we say, in the Nama stage. That means that there's, there is a strong reflection of the light of the pure son of the holy name. In that pure son of the holy name, one can destroy all the sinful reactions that one commits for, for millions of lifetimes. So in this narration here, the uh, Yamadudas have been frustrated by the Vishnu Dudas and defeated in a discussion, showing the superior Arya of Vaishnavas over the position of Yamaraj and the importance of glorifying the holy name as the means for uh, being come freed of all sinful activities. The Yamadudas are dedicated fully to Yamaraj. And so they, uh, they uh, glorify Yamaraj and their service to Yamaraj, knowing what their service is, but they don't know, did not understand that there's a higher principle, someone higher than Yamaraj. They were thinking that Yamaraj was the, the highest authority within existence. Now coming back to Yamaraj, Yamaraj starts to speak to them and clarifies their doubts because they they're asking Yamaraj so many questions. Well, we thought you were the greatest authority. How is it we were thwarted in our service to you? And then Yamaraj speaks many verses, which are mentioned here. And one of the main verses he says is, Etavan eva loke smin humstam dharma para smitaham bhakti yoga bhagavati tam nama grahana arivi. Devotional service beginning with the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is the ultimate religious principle for the living entity in human society. Uh, in other words, what he's saying is that the highest principle that one can engage in or highest occupation one can engage in is to engage in service to the transcendent Lord. There's nothing higher than that. But within that category of the highest activity, devotional service, the highest form of devotional service or the ultimate principle of devotional service is to chant the holy names of the Lord. Hmm. The Prabhupada goes on to say, uh, after chanting the holy name of the Lord and dancing in ecstasy, one gradually sees the form of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord, and the transcendental qualities of the Lord. This way one fully understands the situation of the personality of Godhead. And then, of course, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Janma Karma Chame Devyam Evam Yoveti Tattvataha Tattva Deham Puna Janma Naiti Mam Eti Sur Juna. He says, One who can understand the transcendental nature of my birth and activities does not upon leaving this body, again take birth in this material world that attains to my abode, the son of Kunti. This verse from the Bhagavad Gita was uh, designated by Prabhupada as the most important verse in the Gita. And then the understanding is, is that if you know Krishna's 
the nature of Krishna's transcendental activities and, and his uh, appearance in this world. What does that mean? No, known by realization. If you know that everything Krishna does is transcendental, including his birth, although it appears to be like an ordinary birth, then that knowledge uh, transports you to the spiritual realm, never to take birth again. But this knowledge is gained through the practice of devotional service, focusing on chanting of the holy names of the Lord. In the next verse, he goes on to say, he's speaking to his uh, servants, the Amadudas, my dear servants who are as good as my sons, just see how glorious is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. The greatly sinful Ajamiya chanted only to call his son, not knowing that he was chanting the Lord's holy name. Nevertheless, by chanting the holy name, he remembered Narayan, and thus he was immediately saved from the ropes of death. Prabhupada gives a, what we say, a sweeping statement to open the purport, and he says that there's no need to conduct research into the significance of chanting the holy names of the holy, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This pastime of Ajamil is sufficient proof of the power of the holy name. And Lord Chaitanya advise Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalo, Kalon Nasteva 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 Gatir Agneta. He emphasizes the chanting of the holy name by emphasizing the point three times. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. The holy name, the holy name, the holy name. Kalon Nastieva, Nastieva, Nastieva. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. Two points are illustrated three times. Uh, the illustration of three indicates uh, absolute principle. When you say something once, there may be considerations that line up against what you say and can be discussed in relationship to what you say. When you say it twice, it becomes more complete and that reduces any possibility that anything else is as significant, but still it leaves open. But according to Vedic literature, when you say something three times, it's absolute. So this verse spoken by Lord Chaitanya, emphasizing the chanting of the holy name as the no other way, uh, gives us the clear picture of the importance of chanting the holy names of the Lord. And Prabhupada said, if we chant the holy names of the Lord in the morning, in the evening with great devotion, we become free from all material miseries. Sometimes we find that the holy name flows nicely when we're chanting. Sometimes, because of whatever reason, we may not understand. It may be due to uh, us being a little tired or could be due to the effects of the modes of material nature. Or it may also be due to the fact that Krishna might be becoming a little less available in the holy name just to, just to see how much devotion we are willing to offer. In any case, that one should chant. One should not give up the chanting because it's difficult or because there's no taste. The taste, as Prabhupada says, taste will come through continuous chanting of the holy names and following the process of bhakti as given by Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned yesterday, in relation to one response to a question, that um, yes, it's important to hear the glories of the Lord as along with our along with the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. 
by hearing the glories of the Lord, it gives us an indication of the nature of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord. And the Lord's pastimes are not just simply activities, but they are fully transcendental and pure. They're not on the material platform. They may be look, they may look like something ordinary, but actually they're not. And they're full of transcendental meaning that we can apply in our Krishna conscious activities. Prabhupada also mentions that by chanting the holy names of the Lord, our love for Krishna will automatically increase. So chant, chant, chant. Of course, there are many statements in relationship to how the holy name works. And one of the relationship, one of the statements which is fundamental is that we must be following the rest of the process has been given by the spiritual master. Prabhupada said, if you're not following the process, or at least trying to follow the process given by the spiritual master, then your chanting will be like cooking with smoke. The idea is that you want your dinner to cook, so you put it on the fire, but all you do is produce smoke. And the smoke, they say wherever there's smoke, there's fire, obviously. But that kind of fire won't be able to cook your food. And as Prabhupada says, it will take 300 years to cook your lunch that way. So therefore, one should carefully follow the rules and regulations in relationship to the process of bhakti. And but keep the holy name as the essence of all one's activities. In other words, it's the supreme sadhana. Especially, we can move into the area of kirtan, where there are many wonderful glorifications of chanting of the holy name in kirtan as being the absolute principle of activity. One such statement is that wherever there's kirtan, what is the need for anything else? Well, there is kirtan of the holy name. All other spiritual activities become reduced in the presence of harinam and kirtan. So go on chanting despite whatever taste or not taste you have. <laughs> There's another verse here in this series of verses. It's a long verse, translation, but I'll read it because it's interesting. When I read this, I found it quite interesting. Because they are bewildered by the illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Yagyavokya, and Jamini and other compilers of the religious scriptures cannot know the secret confidential religious system of the 12 Mahajans. They cannot understand the transcendental value of performing devotional service or chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Because their minds are attracted to the ritualistic ceremonies mentioned in the Vedas, especially in the Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Rik Veda, their intelligence has become dull. Thus, they are busy collecting the ingredients for ritualistic ceremonies that yield only temporary benefits, such as elevation to the higher planets for material happiness. They are not attracted to the Sankirtan Tan movement. Instead, they are interested in pious activities, economic development, authorized forms of sense gratification and ultimately liberation. Prabhupada makes an interesting uh, reference to an incident many years before when they were opening the Krishna Balaram temple in Sri Vrindavan Dham. 
Prabhupada wanted to simply have kirtan as a means for bringing in the opening ceremony. He wanted that to be the opening ceremony. But Prabhupada says, when we established the large Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, we were obliged to have Vedic ceremonies enacted by Brahmanas because the inhabitants of Vrindavan, especially the Smarta Brahmanas, would not accept Europeans and Americans as bona fide Brahmanas. Thus, we had to engage Brahmanas to perform costly yagyas. In spite of these yagyas, the members of the society performed sankirtan loudly with Madanga. And I consider the sankirtan more important than the ritualistic Vedic ceremonies. Both the ceremonies and the sankirtan were going on simultaneously. The ceremonies were meant for persons interested in Vedic rituals, for elevation to heavenly planets, the Sankatan were meant for the pure devotees interested in pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Prabhupada ends, we would simply have performed Sankatan, but then the inhabitants of Vrindavan would not have taken the installation ceremony seriously. He said, he says, especially in this age, Sankatan alone is sufficient. If the members of our temples in different parts of the world simply continue sankirtan before the deity, especially before the deity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they will remain per perfect. There is no need of any other performances. But then he goes on to say, nevertheless, to keep ourselves clean and habits in mind, deity worship and other regulative principles are required. And he quotes Jiva Goswami saying that, you know, we should do other forms of worship such as deity worship in order to keep ourselves clean and pure so we can chant the holy names of the Lord like that. So those of us who live outside the temple, and particularly now there is restrictions with visiting such mandirs, uh, one of the activities we can perform is bring Bring as many people together as you can within an allowable congregation and uh, have kirtan. Sing together, chant, and when you feel happy, you can also dance. So this is, uh, this is our process. And it's very simple, very direct, very pleasing very joyful, and the essence of the way to worship the Lord in this era, age by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If we keep chanting foremost in our lives and propagate that principle, to others, we will always feel the mercy of the Lord and be ready to uh, make advancement in Krishna conscious. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, please Raise them now. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Beautiful class. Hare Krishna, uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Uh, I was wondering, you mentioned that uh, we shouldn't be bothered when there is no taste. And uh, I understand this, but I was just also thinking that uh, how can we uh, notice when uh, lack of taste is uh, due to us not uh, doing properly the chanting? I just keep chanting. 
just think about how you can improve, that's all. More and more attention, more devotion, more clarity and and sounding the names. Prabhupada puts much emphasis on the point of pronunciation when we chant, not to push the names together where there is a, a lack of clarity, which causes us not to hear the name properly. Because hearing is the principle where uh, consciousness becomes fo focused. When hearing is nice and continuous, consciousness develops where we, are, we become more and more fixed than on the holy name. But if we're not chanting clearly, then it won't develop. The pronunciation of the, the sound is good. So what we recommend is that um, the three principles that we talk about in preparing ourselves each day for the, our japa is to uh, sit in a position where we are sitting properly, either in the chair with straight back or on the floor, sitting with straight back. Um, and then uh, carefully chanting the holy names and listening to the sound, uh, going very, what we say, carefully, not trying to go too fast, but hearing. And then as we hear continuously for some time, uh, one becomes more uh, absorbed in the name. And then what happens is that then the speed will automatically increase. And then we add the mood of love, devotion, prayer to the chanting. And then that makes it complete. We call it proper positioning, proper pronunciation, and added prayer, prayerful chanting, chanting in the mood of supplication, chanting in the mood of uh, calling out to Krishna for his mercy. So, yeah, we have to not be discouraged by a lack of taste, but keep working on it. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Very nice class, Maharaj. I uh, just have one small question. That uh, when the Ajamil called for his son as a Narayan, what was the like his mood or intensity of that uh, cry that the Vishnu Duta came for him? Uh, he had centered his life around his son. His son became his only object of affection. It wasn't anymore his wife or anything else. He was 88 years old. Um, he had a son who was three years old. So he was completely absorbed and so as it's described he was always calling his son to you know do something or be with him so when he saw the agents of death coming along because his life was centered around his son he called out for his son but that was his good fortune but the Acharyas mentioned something interesting that when he heard his own voice calling the name of Narayan, he remembered the Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Only when he called, when his name was remembered by him. In other words, he called for his son, but as soon as he heard his own voice, he remembered Narayan. Yeah, so that that was his good fortune. He, he named his son. That's what Prabhupada said in, in Vedic culture. The parents, they named their children after names of God. 
and therefore they're all still practicing chanting when they're calling their children. We shouldn't chastise them though, like, because if you're chastising them and using their name, that's not so good. <laughs> but when you chastise, refrain from using the name. <laughs> And when you're calling with affection or just in general, then the name will bring great, will actually bring purification simply by chanting the names of one's uh, family members. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. I think uh, you mentioned that point is very important, that when he called, he, he heard his son's name, Narayan, he remembered the Narayan, like Vishnu Bhagavan. So I think that's a very important point because I never heard that before. Everybody, whenever we listen to Ajamil's story, everyone says that he, he called for his son and the Vishnu Duta came. Yeah. But like you mentioned that he remembered the Narayan, actual Narayan, then only they come. So chanting name is not enough. I think we have to remember the Lord at the same time. Yeah, he just happened to remember when he heard his own voice calling. Not when he tried to call, but when he heard his, the sound of his own voice. Because he called with such, uh, such desperation. <laughs> Helplessness. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you Ryan. Yes. Hare Krishna, does anyone else has any questions on Holy Name? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, please all glories. Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Can you hear me? Yeah, Govardhan Leela, Hare Guru. Hare Krishna. You know, um, when I'm chanting, you know, I know we're supposed to be listening very carefully to the sound vibration. Now, some people say, well, you can uh, also think of Krishna's pastimes or think of anything related to Krishna. And I find myself, when I do that, um, I'm not pronouncing as properly. It seems like I go off, it, I can't concentrate on both at the same time. So is the sound the most important thing because I'm thinking, well, I don't know. That's that's the question. And also, um, Anjali Gupta was talking about the Vishnu Dutas. I was, uh, we were reading in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam yesterday about the Yama Dutas. And that scared the living daylights out of me. I felt like I was getting a, a Catholic catechism lesson. I was scared to death. I was practically having nightmares about those crazy Yamadutas and the Yamarajas uh, realm. And it's, it just scares me so much that um, I want to no, um, be no more worry. perfect. It's not for the devotees, it's for the non-devotees. Ah, okay. That, that helps. Long, yeah, if you, as long as you're in devotional service, the Yamadutas can't touch you. How come, um, yeah, they never come like in, in the, um, well then maybe because uh, people who are not Krishna conscious, but it's supposed to be God consciousness. How come I don't hear about these Yamadutas coming for like family members or others who have been uh, very sinful in their lives? Oh, it happens. When the time of death, People sometimes look very frightened. Frightened. We uh, there's sometimes at the time of when people are leaving their body, they have this fearful look on their face. Well, this happened to uh, one father, one of our devotees. It was quite evident that when he was leaving, he was seeing something very frightening. It's a wonderful story behind it. 
and he called out for help because he was seeing something that nobody else could see. Mm -hmm. So they're there, they're not fictitious, they're real, but they're for those who don't take up spiritual life, who live a, a materialistic life. Well, they scare me. <laughs> and uh, well, they shouldn't be scaring you because you have nothing to do with them. No, no, I don't. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be scared, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you like being scared? No, no, I don't. Then I don't. To read this section in the Bhagavatam, here, just read this section, Canto. Six, chapter one through three. Read those first three chapters, and you'll get a clear understanding. Uh, uh, Yamaraj is instructing his, his his followers that don't touch anybody who who calls on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, and also now with the chanting. I shouldn't be putting anything in my mind at all except hearing the sound. Correct, Guru Maharaj? Uh, I'll give you a scriptural reference. Does anybody have a Bhagavatam fourth canto in front of them? Or some yes, way they can? can. Yes, Maharaj, we can open in Veda base quickly. Fourth canto, eighth chapter, verse 53. Okay, I just I just came back. I had to get a pen, a writing utensil. So it's the fourth canto. Eighth chapter. Okay. Verse 53. Okay. And the now, other was uh, the and, sixth uh, canto, one through three. Well, that's three chapters. Right. This is one verse. Okay. So someone read the last paragraph in that in that uh, purport. Yes, Maharaj, I can read. Another point established in this verse is that meditation should be carried on with the chanting of mantra. Chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is the easiest process of meditation in this age. As soon as one chants the Hare Krishna mantra, he sees the forms of Krishna, Ram, mm. and their energies, and that is a perfect stage of trance. One should not artificially try to see the form of the Lord while chanting Hare Krishna, but when the chanting is performed offenselessly, the Lord will automatically reveal himself to the view of the chanter. Therefore, the chanter has to concentrate on hearing the vibration and without extra endeavor on his part the Lord will automatically appear. So, yes, I guess then uh, the chant, my chanting needs to, a lot of work then in order to be able to see Krishna's form without trying to conjure it up in my mind when I'm chanting. That's the recommended uh, procedure. Krishna will appear when chanting is nice. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. And I will try to get to read these, uh, the six, one to three uh, this evening. Thank you. That's a lot, but the essence of those uh, instructions in, are in the second canto, second chapter. And the first chapter has the whole story. The second chapter continues the story. The end of the second chapter, it switches to Yamaraj. And then the beginning of the third chapter, there's more instructions by Yamaraj. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
हरे कृष्ण महाराज अपिंसेस महाराज आई हैव अ क्विक क्वेश्चन महाराज वेन माय ग्रैंड फादर माय मदर्स अंकल एक्चुअली uh he was uh, he was a doctor and the whole of his life he did so much charity and he was a very kind person he opened hospitals for everyone and he did uh, so much for the family and for the uh, for others uh, uh but when he was dying like literally like but he wasn't very spiritual person he wasn't at all i think spiritual but when he was leaving his body my mother sat down next to him and uh, chanted and read bhagavad gita twice um so maharaj uh, what like at uh, that time he was literally he was on his death bed basically so do you think that that hearing of bhagavad gita and chanting would have affected him oh yeah oh yeah okay of course you know, yam yam bapi smaram bhavam tatva antre televo tam tam vaiti konta ya sadatha bhava babita this is from bhagavad gita krishna speaks that yeah whoever remembers me at the time of death also attains my to my nature yeah, yeah so leaving the body is important in sense that that will determine where you go so your consciousness at the time of the time of death which is generally accumulated consciousness that has has developed throughout your whole life obviously because he was by nature a very altruistic very uh, compassionate yes yeah that allowed him to hear the glories of the lord okay thank you maharaj that was very relieving thank you <laughs> hari krishna i think vivek and anshu want to ask something Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Shila Prabhupada all glories to you Mr Vivek Hare Krishna Maharaj Maharaj uh, like we say that yes like when we are chanting uh, maha mantra or we are doing any service uh, the actual value is when we are doing offenselessly and that's what mentioned in the uh, this last purport but i feel like many times it might be there that when we are chanting or we are doing any service there might be some offenses indirectly like we are not making any direct offenses but there might be many indirect offenses so how to avoid maharaj like i feel like not sure like is krishna going to accept my any service or not because there might be some indirect offenses well because because the uh, the baby is in the bath water and the bath water is dirty you don't throw the baby out throw out the bath water so although we're not up to the standard in executing devotional service still continue don't be discouraged just try to uh you know work on that consciousness which is pleasing to krishna which is spoken by rupa goswami ayabila sita sunyo gyana kamara avrita anukulena krishna silanam bhakti utamam uh devotional service must be free from any desire for personal gain through fruit of activities uh gain through philosophical speculation on the absolute truth it must be for krishna in other words it must be the activity must be intended for krishna and with the desire to please krishna so four things two things to avoid uh do not include karma and gyan and focus on krishna with a desire to please krishna he said that is pure devotional service so this is mentioned in nectar devotion and it's also explained quite often in the scriptures by shiva prabhupada in his lectures and in general also so uh, memorize that verse uh, read it over and over uh, try to understand it uh, hear the commentaries about it 
And that's the mood of pure devotional service. You're not trying to gain anything personally, either on the physical level or on the mental level. You're trying to serve Krishna and you're trying to please Krishna with that service. So pleasing Krishna means doing it as nice as you can with your attention on the service itself. Thanks, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Krishna Maharaj. Okay. We're getting uh, questions on the chat here. Yes, Maharaj, I'll read it out. So this is from Nikhil yes. Prabhu. Nikhil Prabhu, do you want to read it out? Somebody read. Okay, I will read it. Uh, so uh, Prabhu is saying, sometimes while chanting, our mind goes away and can't concentrate properly on the holy name. In that situation, only our tongue chants the holy name and our minds walks with material things. So can we get the same result of this kind of chanting as Ajamil got? Because Ajamil also had no intention to chant Narayan. He was just calling the name of his son and still he got the mercy of Narayan at last. Not exactly. We should, when our mind goes away, we should bring it back to the process of hearing. Prabhupada would say, there's no question about dealing with the mind while we're chanting. The process is to hear. So continue to work on the hearing process and that will bring the mind into the hearing process and then concentration develops. So when the when they hear, when our mind, when we go away from the hearing process, then our mind walks away on the material things. Just bring it back. I'm, I can't say you, because Ajamil chanted uh, helplessly. He had, he had, he was in a helpless situation. He called out in desperation for his son, but he remembered Narayan. So if you can chant like that in that complete helpless state, then you can come close to getting the mercy of, of, of Ajami. Of course, he didn't go back home, back to Godhead. We understood that. He had to take, he had to continue his life at, uh, at the holy place of Hardwar in the Himalayas for the remainder of his life, and then he finished up, and then he went back to God. So he wasn't completely purified at that time. He had developed freedom from all sinful reactions, but he hadn't developed pure love of God. So the element that is important to understand in this narration is that he called desperately. There was nothing else that he was thinking of except his son, but he called the name of Narayan. That's the power of the Lord's holy name. So if we can get to the mood of desperately calling to the name of the Lord, helplessly, complete helplessness, then we can un then we can get the benefit of Elijah Mill. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I was just this uh, this point. So uh, I think now it's clear. To, uh, so I got this, I got your point. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, may I have another question? Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, thinking about uh, that uh, we get uh, all these uh, beautiful spirit spiritual names uh, and uh, it also helps us uh, to Whenever we devotees call uh, each other, 
in our names, uh, it, it should help us to, to remember the Lord and uh, his uh, associates. But uh, <clears throat> there are these nicknames uh, which the devotees use. And uh, I, I think that we, we miss b this point uh, because of this and, and maybe we are even offensive. Uh, I don't know what to think about this. It's a Western habits, that's all. <laughs> we have a devotee, his name is Sid Arthur, so they call him Sid sometimes. <laughs> so Sid is a short for Sydney, which is a name also. So using the American slang jargon, instead of saying Sid Arthur, hey Sid. But it's not really, uh, you know, culture, etiquette. It's just sometimes it's done, and because maybe that person is really close to us, and we we get a little, what we say, uh, familiar. Depends on your name. Because sometimes they call us, you know, they say, hey, Swami. <laughs> There's so many Swamis. So when they say Swami, if we're around, we, we, we respond or become alert. <laughs> and uh, isn't it offensive to to, for example, to Krishna, that uh, his his name is is uh, changed like this. Uh, it's not recommended. Okay. So somehow I I never did it because I <clears throat> for me it's just uh, very strange. Um, but but so many devotees do it, and I just didn't know what to think about. I, I also don't want to uh, to criticize even in my mind, so I, I, I just thought of uh, asking. <laughs> but uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Hare Krishna, is there any other questions? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. This is Tusha. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Turn up your volume, please. Okay. Let's see if I can bring it up a little bit. <clears throat> can you hear me better now, Guru Maharaj? Good. Uh, I'm a little bit confused. Um, when we read the purport just now, it says that you mustn't picture or you shouldn't have an image of Krishna when you're chanting. In the mind. Yet, uh, remember, in your mind. So Not surreptitiously, surreptitiously placing this image in your mind while you're chanting. Prabhupada's point is that if you're chanting nicely, then the, the image will automatically appear according to what you're familiar with. In other words, your own deities or the deities in the temple will come into your mind. You can sit in front of a picture of the Lord and chant, that's fine. That's not the same as what we were talking about. Okay, maybe uh, because I, I, I remember Buddha Bhavana Prabhu's um, wonderful lecture on the sounds and sound vibrations we were doing in Zagreb or, or Ljubljana, I can't remember which one, but he was saying that you should have an image of you know at least the focus on the lotus feet of the lord when you're chanting so am i getting confused about having an image in your mind or you mentioned surreptitious well you know there are different schools of thought and this is what Prabhupada is presenting some people who are more advanced in their process of krishna consciousness can immediately place the image in their mind and chant the holy name clearly. The Prabhupada is giving us a more of a systematic approach to the, to the chanting. 
that from the name comes the form, from the form comes the qualities, from the qualities comes the pastimes. So the name reveals itself in stages. So that's Prabhupada's point. And so the, the thing is, many times people, when they try to place the form in their mind, they, uh, they lose focus on the chanting. The Prabhupada is speaking from that point of view. And this is recommended for a general sense. You know, certain devotees will disagree with this point that Prabhupada makes because maybe because they're on a higher level of chanting and it's easy for them to place them, to chant and place the Lord. The Prabhupada is giving a general instruction how to approach the Holy Name. So this also becomes a measure of how your quality of chanting is progressing. Um, if you're able to place well, the... Uh, uh, yeah, if the Lord's form comes in, in your mind while you're chanting, you can understand that, that you're, you're concentrating nicely. But don't try to force it and uh, or do it artificially. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Doesn't mean you can't think of the Lord while you're chanting. It's just when you're, he's trying to say, don't try to create this meditation while you're chanting. Right. Oh, thank you for clearing up this point. I, I was confused about this. <laughs> Sit in front of your deities and chant. <laughs> <laughs> I chant in front of Tulsi, my Rani. Much. Oh, yeah, Lord Chaitanya followed that and he recommended that for all of us. In all of our temples, Tulsi Devi is there during the Japa session. Thank, thank you so much. Nice class today. Uh, Okay, so we are at six o'clock or five o'clock now, your time. So I think we should conclude here. Yes, yeah, sure, Maharaj. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll send tomorrow's uh, topic to uh, who is the host for tomorrow? I will be the host for tomorrow, Maharaj. Anjali again? Yes, Maharaj. I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for the beautiful much. class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Lovely class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. 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 Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Thank you Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Krishna Bhavani. Okay.